It is the voice of college football, plus or minus three. Who will make the list in 2024? Welcome to the Voice of College Football, breaking down the game we all love each and every day with you, best discussion, debate, and analysis. All right, this is the plus or minus three, courtesy the Voice of College Football. What is this? What is this, Mark? A new stat, a new trend? Yes, this is catching fire across the country. It is the new rage in college football. It's the Voice of College Football, plus or minus three. We recognized several years ago that the preseason publications, Athlons, Street and Smiths, etc., they were being way, 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 way too conservative with their predictions. They were basically adding a win or a loss, and that was pretty much the next year's prediction for the most part, except for the very obvious Colorado situation of 2020. Two going into 2023. Other than that, being way too conservative. And I thought, these uh, predictions seem rather conservative. I'd like to know, how much is there a drastic change between one college football season and the next? Because the sport does seem kind of stale in regards to, these are always the elite and on down the line. Well, you know what? The elites stay the same, basically. But everybody else, from about Team 10 through the rest of the country, there's a lot of volatility. And I routinely, and if you watch us on a regular basis here at the Voice of College Football and take part in the call-in shows, you know that I ask you all the time, how many teams do you think have a win total from one season to the next that goes up by at least three or down by at least three? And there are currently 69 teams in the Power 5 plus Notre Dame and you, like I would have done years ago, guess 6, 8, 10, 12 teams that have that kind of disparity. So think 6-6 six and six team one year, elevating to 9-3 and three, or dropping to 3-9 and nine at least. Think last season we had Colorado, the season before Coach Prime, they were 1-11. He elevates them to 4-8. That's a three-game difference. Think Florida State. That was 9-3 and three the year before. Nice season, but 12-0 and 0 the next season. This is a regular season uh, experiment. This is a regular season measurement because we don't know who and uh, teams are going to play in the postseason. So, again, we'll take you through what happened last season where, get this, out of 69, 69 teams in the Power Five, 25, 25 of the 65. Who are those teams going to be in 2024 that either jump in wins or plummet in wins? And sometimes you look like a fool trying to make that prediction because if you look at any one of the power conferences, it's going to be about a third of the conference uh, because as long as I've been tracking this, it's been about 18 to 22 typically is the number. 18 to 22 out of what used to be the uh, 65 in the Power 5, now is the 69 in the Power 4, there's going to be a big difference with a number of these teams. Spot the teams. Who are they going to be? Well, let's run down to the candidates. And then, of course, leave your comments down below of who you think I missed. Who is going to take the big surge or the big plummet here in 2024? Now moving on to the Big 12, and there were just a slew of teams last year especially with those four new entries into the conference coming from the group of five who hit that plus or minus three. Texas Tech could be a candidate to take off in this new conference without Oklahoma and Texas. Got to get to nine and three, though, after a six and six last year. So this is a bit of a stretch, but play along with me. Got to win that game against Washington State on the road, you would think, because otherwise... If they only go two and one out of conference, they've got to go seven and two in the conference. So win all the non-conference games, and then six and three is the target in conference. And there's a ton of winnable games. Of course, it's the Big Twelve. Anyone can beat anyone. But look at all those games. They can win any of those games. Of course, they can lose any of those games. So Texas Tech, Sean McGuire, the target's nine and three that schedule could possibly be the path 
to a nine-win season in Lubbock. BYU was on the list last year in a bad way. They could be back on the list this year in a good way, but they got to get to eight and four after just a five-win season for Kalani Sataki in 2023. Three non-conference games, all very winnable. Southern Illinois, SMU, and Wyoming. Okay, BYU then would have to win five of nine conference games. And again, it's hard to distinguish really difficult games in the Big 12 versus cakewalks. There are no layups, but there are no elite teams in the Big 12. The toughest games on the road at Utah. Also, of course, uh, Arizona, although Jed Fish left and a number of players, Oklahoma State made it to the Big 12 championship game, and Ollie Gordon and Alan Bowman are back this season. Uh, that Kansas team should be really good. But BYU, 8-4, and four, it's a possibility to make our plus or minus three. Dave Aranda and Baylor have picked up the roller coaster ride left by Matt Rule, and Baylor should be a candidate for this list every year. If they had a down year, they could bounce back. If they had a big year, they could plummet. They've been all over the place. Aranda took this team to a Big 12 championship just two years prior to going 3-9. and nine. So they went from 10-2 and two regular season and they were on the list for going 6 and 6 the next regular season then they were on the list again last season at 3 and 9 do they bounce back and one of the Big 12 games is designated as a non-conference game that would be Utah even though they have moved to the Big 12 that was a home and home series signed before Utah entered the Big 12 so probably 2 and 1 in the non-conference if they can get by Air Force and then they would have to win Four games in the Big 12. And there you see the list of games. Can you five four wins? Well, Houston's a likely candidate. Oklahoma State and Kansas going to be difficult to defeat even in Waco. So Baylor might be a bit of a stretch to get to 6-6 six and six and make our list. But that's certainly this football program's history. From college football playoff team in 2021 to 3-9 and nine two years later. 12-0. Then 9-3, and three. so they made the list two years ago with three less wins. Then they made it again, going from nine wins to three. Okay, Scott Satterfield, what do you got? Can you get to 6-6? Six and six? Cincinnati's got Towson, Pitt, Miami of Ohio as non-conference opponents. They've got to win two of those three games. And then they would have to win four in-conference Houston, Arizona State at home, making the long trip to Cincinnati. Tough stretch drive, West Virginia, Iowa State, Kansas State, TCU. So maybe they get to win all three non-conference games, go three and six in conference to get to bowl eligibility and to make our list more importantly, of course, plus or minus three, Cincinnati's got to be six and six. Of course, the darlings of college football, Everybody watching their games, they get off to the hot start. They plummet, but they still are on the plus three side with the four-win season. They're in the top 15 in the country in returning production, including Shadur Sanders at quarterback. Let's look at Colorado's schedule here. As it's now a difficult climb to get to seven wins. They whipped Nebraska last year by 22 points, but they've got to face Matt Rule's team with probably better quarterback play on the road let's say they win two out of three non-conference then they've got to go five and four in the big 12 to get there Baylor's at home Cincinnati's at home those should be wins the stretch drive is tough Texas Tech Utah Kansas Oklahoma State is formidable Colorado Probably a difficult time getting to seven and five after the four and eight season in 2023. When does Arizona football go nine and three? It's been a long time. They went to the Fiesta Bowl in 2014, but it's been downhill ever since through Rich Rod and Kevin Sumlin. Of course, Jed Fish did a heck of a job. They won a bowl game to finish with their highest ranked team since 1998, but Jed Fish is off to Washington. Noah Fafita is not, though. He's back at quarterback after being the newcomer of the year in the Pac-12. Arizona 
though, as a candidate to drop off a 9-3 and regular season down to 6-6. Six and six. Non-conference play, they've got New Mexico and they've got Northern Arizona, and then one of these Big 12 matchups is a non-conference game technically. So there's all sorts of games that they can lose, that's for sure. they got to go to Kansas State. they got to go to Utah. They've got to go to BYU. UCF is a long trip for the Wildcats all the way across country. TCU's a road game. So we can definitely see them losing six games here, can't we? This is a likely candidate right here. Arizona from 9-3 and three to 6-6. Six and six. On the flip side of the Territorial Cup, we've got Kenny Dillingham and Arizona State. They were 3-9 and nine last year. So they got to get to 6-6 six and six to make our list. Look at the first three weeks. Wyoming, Mississippi State at home. New coach in Jeff Levy. New quarterback, new system. Texas State on the road. Texas State beat Baylor, but still should win those three non-conference games. You would think, although Mississippi State's a toss-up. So... Let's say they get by Mississippi State in their 3 and 0 non-conference. They go 3 and 6, then they hit our list. I can see the 3 wins there somewhere. Again, it's the Big 12. It's difficult to differentiate definite wins and losses here because they just basically don't exist. It's going to come down to uh, breakout players, injuries, field goal kicking late in games, all that comes into play. Arizona State's a plus or minus three candidate going from three and nine to a possible six and six. So those are the candidates. And once again, it's the plus or minus three here at the Voice of College Football. Who are my selections? I like a four pack of Washington, 12 and 0 last year, got to drop to at least nine and three. Pitt, three and nine last year, get back to bowl play at six and six. Arizona State, Kenny Dillingham. Moving in from the Pac-12 to the Big 12, 3-9 and nine last year. I think we can find them six wins right there. And also Washington State, the last team we looked at. Again, a bit of a cheat there. 5-7 and seven in the Pac-12. Play that Mountain West schedule. So they should be able to get to eight wins under Jake Dickert. Your candidates, we want to hear from you. Leave your comments down below. And, uh, of course, lock it in right here at the Voice of College Football. Give us a like. Of course, sub it up, and we'll see you next time right here at the Voice of College Football.